going on YouTube? Welcome back to Beamer Fam. Today we have a 2020 Mercedes C63S AMG. So I have the key to the competition right here in my hands. And we're pretty much just going to figure out how this car compares to the BMW M4 since I own one. So if we look around the car, we have a nice pair of 19 inch wheels on the front and we have 20 inch wheels in the back. They're also paired with massive brake calipers and rotors. Calipers come painted in red, which I think is a nice almost evil kind of look and it's very appropriate for the AMG. Uh, this is the V8 bi-turbo. So I believe it's a four liter V8 and uh, comes with one turbo a little bit bigger than the other, which is the bi-turbo. So we have a two-tone black on off-white grayish Alcantara kind of theme going on in the interior. We have Alcantara all over the steering wheel. We have the race line. We'll get into that in a second once we go for a drive. Not only that, the, there is a nice factory side skirt, which you can option in carbon fiber that complements the whole profile of the car, gives it a more sporty look, kind of separates it from the regular C-Class. So as far as the rear, this is probably the favorite part for me on this car. Very sleek tail lights. I actually like it better than the previous generation, the W204. Nice muscular quad tail pipes too on each side. A nice separation between the two, but they also look very prominent and very bold on the back end of the car. So as you can see, this is the C63S. The S is equivalent to the BMW M4 competition. So basically the S just adds a little bit more horsepower than the regular C63. I think it's around 15 to 20. Not only that, the exhaust is a little bit more aggressive. Also, this car comes with a factory spoiler. So that's basically it for the exterior of the car. Now we're gonna hop in it, get the motor started, and see how this thing performs on the road. Join us in the interior of the 2020 C63S AMG. And first impression, man, this thing is very inviting. Um, actually, it's inviting at the same time as it is almost intimidating because of all the materials you have on the in, uh, inside the cab. And so your Alcantara, leather, uh, all two-tone on the steering wheel, uh, flat bottom steering wheel, very aggressive, sporty, racing-inspired uh, steering wheel. So not only that, that the rest of that language transpires throughout the rest of the interior with you know AMG badging, uh, the IWC clock as well. And uh, not only that, we have a new touch with these uh, new driving dynamic modes um, available right on the steering wheel and a actual digital display, like a little screen right here. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna have it in race mode right now. Um, and then we can also adjust via digital screen as well on the steering wheel, what our traction control looks like right here. Uh, we have sport handling mode we're just gonna we're just gonna keep it on for now um, and then we're gonna have everything in sport plus uh, we're just gonna see what the what the c63s coupe performs like compared to the bmw m4 coupe. Obviously, mo straight pipe 
fully straight piped his S class. So this has the same motor in that. It's just to feel it in a small package like this, I would love to just experience that. Um, downshifts sound very aggressive. disconnected from the road um, and that's actually the main reason why I actually didn't choose a C63 over an M4 you know for me I wanted the raw you know race car feels like I'm driving on rails aspect of driving um, and this car does not really offer that this car offers the just fast as hell in a straight line speed um, on top of that you have all the luxury the amenities um, and just the, the vibe that is, you know, Mercedes set of just being in a Mercedes AMG. It's got the ambient lighting. Uh, it's turned on to blue right now. So we have a nice, very, almost panoramic style sunroof in this small coupe, which I think is pretty unique because, you know, BMW definitely doesn't offer that. I know Audi doesn't offer that as well. I'm not sure about Porsche, but if we're talking German makes in this class of car, it's the first time I've seen anything like this in a car like this. Feel the weight of uh, the difference to the Beamer, but I'm certain this car weighs more. We're gonna hop in the M4, give that a little rip, have you guys feel that a little bit compared to this car. Hey, you guys, join me outside my BMW M4, and we're gonna walk around some of the features the car has from factory. I figured this would be a great opportunity to compare equal generations of the M4 and the C63. Granted, the S is equivalent to the competition, but you guys will get the gist of what I'm trying to convey. So if you can't notice already, the styling of the M4 is by far way more sportier than the C63. Obviously you have your plus and minus, but if you just actually look at the front of this car, you can really see how much air is coming in through the front end of this car. So I'd say twice, if not three times as many people look at this car as opposed to C63. I only had maybe one or two people actually look at the C63 with, from the whole day I had it. That's where this, every time I go out in this car, I actually had somebody hop out in a fast food and you know, they start taking pictures behind the car and stuff like that. I think people who aren't enthusiasts kind of see this car actually looking a little more exotic and a little more special, if you will. So with that being said, we also have a nice aggressive bump on the hood, which gives it even more of a sporty look. Not only that, the wing mirrors right here are much more aerodynamic than the C-Class. We have a nice aggressive side fin with the M4 badge right there as well. It gives it some more aggression. BMW also implemented the carbon fiber roof on this car once again, but this one's a bit different because it has a little bit of a double bubble in the roof. And the so the reason BMW did that right there is so you can actually have more headroom when getting inside the car. I'll show you inside of it, but there's a lot more space for a helmet. So when you take this car to the track, you have a lot more space and your helmet isn't brushing against the roof. So that means if you're taller, you're just gonna be more comfortable when taking your car to the track. So that gives you an idea of uh, BMW's, I guess, philosophy and thinking when they engineered this car. They wanted to make sure it's a daily, basically track car, which I love. Coming around to the back of the car, we have the typical BMW M quad tail pipes kind of in the center a little bit on the M3, M4 models. They kept that tradition with this generation as well. You know, I love how they integrated a kind of like a spoiler in the actual 
trunk you know it makes it look more sporty again on the m models they kept that double bubble language and transferred it from the roof all the way back down to the trunk so it just it looks so good in person when you're looking at the car and watching all the lines meet so here we open up the interior of the m4 and as you can see right off bat not as fancy as the mercedes but you can see how sporty and you know the seats the steering wheel the non-digital cluster you know everything is very old school bmw very pure easy to read you see your speed right there you see your revs right there that's really all you need the m badge on the seat actually lights up at night which is a very cool touch but as you can see the headrest and the seat itself are just one piece almost all cars uh the headrest and the actual seat itself are separate you can adjust you know raise and lower the headrest but in this you know it's kind of like a fixed kind of like race seat which i love you know, we've got loads of carbon fiber in here just a very sporty vibe in this car uh, not only that the paddle shifters are actually a, a, bit, a bit bigger than the amg and then we also have extended leather on the dashboard that carries out to the door panels as well uh, just a very nice spec on my car not only that we have the nice little race touch like the m colors stitched on the steering wheel itself so if you guys didn't know m is short for motorsport and that philosophy just carries throughout the whole car so without further ado let's hop in it and go for a drive we're gonna put it in sport mode right now wow and already this thing handles even better than the c63 you feel more in your seat, the bolsters keep you in place much more than the Mercedes. Mercedes is more of a you know, long road trip kind of thing, but you know, this car actually has the heads up display. So I don't know if they're, they even offer that for the C63S. The one that we drove today did not have it. And it's actually quite disappointing because in this one, you can see all of your revs and you can see your shift points and even flashes different lights at you when the car wants you to shift near red line um, and it's just you never really have to take your eyes off the road and it's very performance oriented as well so you know that's one thing i love about this car uh, not only in that <laughs> oh what a car and then how would the turn in on this car is absolutely ridiculous wow you know just hopping out the c60 Hopping out the C63 and getting into this car. Wow, and I don't even have full traction control off. Cut traction right there. I have the car in MDM mode. <laughs> All you hear is turbochargers, man. I love that sound of the inline stick. You can tell BMW is building their M cars for them to go on the track. They expect the owners to track these cars. As to where with AMG, that's not the first thing they're looking for. They're actually making sure that the driver is happy on the day they commute to work or just on the road in general. So I'm going to show you guys what this, how this car performs with traction off. Granted, you know, keep in mind it's 80 degrees outside, and this is a brand new pavement. So um, not only that, the tires I'm running are Michelin Pilot Super Sports. Much more wide. Even the turning radius is actually one of the things I don't like about the M4. 
is the turning radius is actually pretty pitiful because of how wide the car is. This is something you really experience in supercars and exotics. You know, cars that are extremely wide, like the Aventador or the 458 and stuff like that. But this car you know, is honestly just as wide, so you get that kind of that downside to it as well. As to where in the C63, honestly, I felt like the turning radius wasn't as bad as in the M4. much more tight than the C63S. Like, it's on a whole different ballpark in terms of how tight it is. Not only that, the feedback you get through the steering wheel, you can feel each and every little bump. Now this car does have adaptive suspension, so I have it in Sport Plus right now, so the car is very rigid in terms of, you know, the chassis. I can feel everything. If I run over a rock, I'm feeling it in the steering wheel and in the suspension, so. This car, you know, how the power is delivered, it feels faster, you know, like, just how, like, when I'm on the, I'm on very light throttle right now, but if I step into it, you know, you just get warp speed mode, and, you know, the boost kicks in, and it's very, a different experience than the C63. This thing just handles like a bat out of hell. Not only that, this car actually does have the heads-up display, which the C63, unfortunately, did not. Now, you guys are going to have to let me know if they even offer that on the C63 SMG um, from factory, but, you know, that's one thing I love about the M4 is the heads-up display is very easy to read. It shows you what gear you're in. It has actually, like, racing lights, like the steering wheel that has racing lights that flash at, flash at you to tell you when to shift. This has that in the heads-up display, so essentially you never have to look down. Yeah, you could use the dials, but, um, you know, I like how they kept the non-digital instrument cluster and then also implemented the uh, technological advancements, if you will, with the heads-up display and seeing everything on that. So you almost get the two-for-one deal kind of special going on with this car. <laughs> now, if you're looking into buying one of these cars and you know, you're someone who likes to take their car to the track or you like to drive spiritually through the back rows and take corners and stuff like that, highly recommend the M, but if you're somebody who just wants to commute, you know, you're not really the hardcore race type, but you like the luxury and you like to go fast, then the C63S is definitely a car for you. Um, you know, that being said, they're both amazing animals and it depends on your taste. Uh, and these two cars just really show you where, you know, we're at as a human race in terms of technology. Because these cars, zero to 60, you know, well under four seconds. And that's wild for a car at this price point. Especially when you're talking to you. So, whether it's a 2020 or 2015 C63S, 2020 or 2015 BMW M4, these cars are just so much bargain in my opinion, man. You just, it just feels so premium and damn near exotic. Um, and that's also another thing. You put them both together, this car would look much faster than the C63. At the same time, that's kind of what is cool about the C63. It's kind of a sleeper in a sense. You know, if you're not a car guy, I mean, you know, maybe you're in a nice car or something. Oh, this racer, whatever. C63 is going to take off, and nobody would ever suspect it. It kind of looks like a regular C class. So, um, you know, ups and downs to both of that, but. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let me know if you guys want to see any more head-to-head -head reviews. Also, follow me on Instagram at BeamerFam, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.